Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. Uh, I'm Zaratustra, your host, broadcasting live from Los Angeles on this beautiful, sunny Southern California day in December. And uh, I always have to remind myself of being so grateful for having the opportunity that I live in this part of the world and um, we all have a tendency to take everything for granted when it's uh, readily there and it's available and everything is easy, is going our way and we uh, have a tendency naturally to ease into it and feel like it's always going to be like this and then we're kind of somehow uh, give in to the mind and the mind comes and complains so and it doesn't matter where you are you could be living in Caribbean or in Hawaii or you can be living in the most ideal situation in the world but still the mind the thoughts come and find some kind of glitches or focuses on something and complains so it's really good to be alert and aware and grateful for everything that we do have and focus on all the blessings that we do receive every day from existence and uh, enjoy that and be present with it and be grateful for it from our relationships, from our health, and everything else. Um, the topic of the day, uh, one of our uh, participants asked me to talk about the subject of blame. So, uh, it could be self-blame, or it could be blaming other people, or being blamed by others. So, we're going to talk about that. And, as always, um, for those of you who are new with us, uh, we have everybody muted because of the background noise and if devices are on, then it's going to be a mess and it's going to be very difficult to hear each other. So we mute everyone. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a short meditation for about 15 to 20 minutes. After that, I will talk about the subject of the day. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, either you can write it on the chat box or you're welcome to wave at me uh, and, uh, or unmute yourself and ask your question. So let's just take a deep breath and relax into this moment and do this without an effort without trying to meditate because meditation as we talked about it and I've spoken about it many times meditation is not an action uh, on the contrary that a lot of people think that medica meditation is something you have to do and that's not how it is meditation is something that occurs naturally and it's a part of our our lives so it's available it happens so you are just by simply exercising your natural birthright by simply being your presence and not being engaged with your thoughts then meditation takes over so very easy, very simple, and effortless. That's how it is, really. It's not even that that's how it should be. That's how it is. And many, many times, keep in mind that in your natural state, you fall into a meditative state without even knowing it or trying to. So take a deep breath and a very easy simple way is to gently take your attention from the outer world into the inner world 
you're shifting your attention. So you bring your attention towards your own self. You bring your attention towards that person who is right now hearing my words. He's listening to me. You're bringing your attention in that direction. Very, very easy. Very, very simple. Very effortless. If you have a hard time doing that, then imagine that there is a center, there's a pole, there's a column running inside you. It's within you. And it's solid. It's established in the earth. It's a column. It never changes. It's rooted in the earth. And you're simply turning your attention in that direction. Towards a something which is very still inside yourself. Something that does not change. So you bring your attention in that direction. And you ease into it. And this is all effortless. Because it doesn't really take much to shift attention. And relax into this moment. Even if your mind is busy and a lot of thoughts running in through your head, just simply disengage from the world of the thoughts and relax into the moment. You relax into the present.
simply relax in this moment. Simply allow yourself to disappear into the moment without any effort, without trying to make things happen. You are sitting in meditation and sometimes thoughts arise in your mind. It's okay. Allow it to come and go without getting engaged with your thoughts. Slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. So you're shifting from a place that you completely let go and melt in like snow melting into the ground but not by not being engaged with your emotions or your thoughts or your story so you just kind of disengage from that story and what happens that immediately space opens up there's an opening happens in simply being in meditation, simply is just diving into the self, diving into this moment of connecting to the center of yourself, which doesn't have a story. It's whatever is the past that's happened to you, your center your higher self, the truth of who you are, is not concerned about it. It doesn't care about it. It's your mind which is very involved and attached. It's your ego that survives through this story. So the story only supports the ego. The story supports this part of you which gets you into trouble. This part of you, which is all thoughts, it's a non-existing entity, only thoughts, which most human beings on this planet, they identify to it as me. 
most people on this planet, they're very inter invested into me, me, me. And there's just this really dragon hidden behind, and it's really proud of itself because it's done a lot of workshops and it's done a lot of self-work, whether it's done psychotherapy or gone to different um, workshops, retreats, um, ayahuasca ceremony, vipassana, all kinds of different trainings. It's very proud of itself. And it's got all these medals, all these ranks here that has added to itself for accomplishments, but in reality, nothing's really happened. It's just an ego which is getting bigger and bigger and thinks that it's doing something. But all it does, it's keeping you away from realizing who you are. So you go beyond that in your meditation and that part kind of is pushed aside, it disappears and all of a sudden vastness takes place and suddenly you're just like in this place of total oneness with everything and you feel expanded, you feel the bliss which is always here and then after whatever long, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour of meditation, what happens is your awareness, your consciousness comes back and re-identifies with the world of the thoughts, re-identifies with the idea of who you think you are. So the ego reappears as the me, as a person separated from everything and now it wants to be on this quest of becoming one not knowing that you are already it and you just experienced it but the ego comes and says no there's more and let's defer it to the future and I need to work on myself more to get to that place which is a trick that happens by the ego to postpone the self-realization to another time so that means it's buying itself time to be around longer and to trick you and it's been doing this ever since the ever since so the story keeps going on and the spiritual seeker remains entertained and thinks that it's on its way to awakening which is really not going anywhere it's just going around and around so i see that every day and sometimes i find myself in the battle with egos and and uh it's very interesting to observe that then out of that comes it's the same ego it's the same thought it's the same mind that comes and does self-blame it begins and coming it's a voice comes in and starts blaming you blaming itself that you're not smart enough you're not sharp enough that you're an idiot you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you don't understand this, you are old, you are ugly, you're out of shape, you're slow, you're stupid, you don't learn, you're not worthy enough, you don't deserve to be seen, you don't deserve being loved. And it just, this list goes on and on and on. And so we start to blame ourselves and for a lot of things that we didn't do in the past for the choices we've made the directions that we went instead of going this way we went that way then this voice comes and blame us uh, that yeah you're you're an idiot you lost your life 
you could have gone to, for example, law school or engineering school or medical school and get and become a doctor or a dentist or or a good lawyer. Instead, you went and married your high school sweethearts and you got stuck into a little town with three kids. And then after a few years, your high school sweetheart left you for somebody else and now you're stuck with three kids. And you're an idiot and you waste your life. And it's too late now. I mean, this is one of the stories. I mean, there's millions of the stories. You all have your stories. So if we want to sit down and listen to the stories, it keeps going on and on and on. So that's the nature of the ego. The nature of the mind is to come and blame you, which is simply it's thoughts. That's all it is. It's thoughts. Then, in the same time, the same thoughts, the same mind, conveniently would like to blame others, which is, is one of our favorite things to do. And we're being encouraged to do that all the time for everything which is wrong in the world and everything's wrong in our lives is because somebody else did something wrong to us and that's why we are where we're at that's why we're screwed up and it's because daddy left when i was seven years old mom was an alcoholic she was abusive um i got beaten up i got raped i got abandoned i got shipped from one place to another place I'm disadvantaged, I'm poor, I'm, you know, wh whatever, the mind will go and figure things out. So, um, it just picks something up, whatever it is. Maybe it goes, picks up the race, the color. Maybe it goes, picks up religion. Uh, and that's how it comes up with some excuses that it's disadvantaged or whatever it is. It's because culture or racism or nationality or religion. It, this story keeps going on and on. So there's a point in your life that <clears throat> awakening starts to take place. Awareness starts to settle. Awareness starts to appear. And self-awakening begins to take place, but a lot of times self-awakening doesn't take... It's not taking 100%, um, it doesn't awaken every section of you. It awakes in a part of you. So not everything comes to awakening right away. So, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So as awareness starts to come, and we start to, let's say we pick up a book, and we read, let's say, it's in the beginning of your transformation and you come across the book, The Alchemist from Paulo Coelho, and you read that book, and that puts an impact on you. And then you go find another book, let's say you read The Peaceful Warrior, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior from Dan Millman, or you read Celestine Prophecies, or you know, or a lot of newer uh, books in spirituality. And then maybe you come across one of the teachers on YouTube. There's a lot of teachers all over the world. Um, then you may feel compelled to go take a self-awakening workshop or a class. So you start to 
learn the lingo and you begin to uh, a little bit wake up to the energy, to awareness, and uh, the self-awakening mechanism starts to, its clock gets activated. Okay. But typically, the spiritual seeker is still seeing things from this point of view that it's me and it's the world. And if you come to this awakening and this shift in this age, this era in 20, you know, uh, 21st century, so then you get exposed to the new age language. And everything's about manifestation, everything's about intention, everything's about um, working on the inner child, working on your past, uh, maybe working and aligning your past uh, ancestry and cutting the ties with your ancestry or things that have gone wrong. Uh, maybe uh, you are channeling with entities from other stars or entities from other dimensions are channeling through you. There's just a myriad of different, um, all kinds of different things happening simultaneously. So it depends where you get tied into and where your connection is and what really appeals to you and feels good for you. And, but basically, 99.99% of the spiritual seekers, they're viewing the world as me and the world. And of course, the world is really screwed up and uh, there's a million different things wrong with it. So, um, if you have compassion towards animals, then you may get pulled into uh, developing, uh, trying to fight for animals' rights. So the world is mean and it's uh, enslaving animals and you get very angry about that and you want to fight for that and how we're treating the animals. Whether we're testing them for chemical stuff or we're killing them, taking their skin, taking their meat, uh, all the vicious things that human beings do to the animals. So you get pulled into that direction. Some people are more, you know, and some people are into environments. They're very much into saving the planet, saving the forest, the water, the air, uh, the oceans. So they become activists in that direction. And again, they're fighting for that. So again, but it's still you and them. It's you and the world. So you're blaming the world for what is going on. Uh, some of us, we are going to the past. So we carry this story of my life, my past, all the things that happened to me, rightfully, because I'm growing up, the parents are screwed up, they're unconscious, naturally, the planet, most of it is unconscious, and they just create babies, they don't even think twice, no one thinks, they just make babies, and everybody else is going like this, go ahead, do it, and then after they make the babies, they're wondering, what the hell did I do? I'm not equipped, I'm not educated, I don't even know how, to, how the hell to handle this, and I'm not ready for this commitment. So, conveniently, we dump the babies on the lap of the mom or grandma and we exit. We run away. So, the kids, they are abandoned and no one's really attending to them. And they don't get the kind of love and security and the care that they need. And so it's very clear, just look around you right now and see what is going on. You know, just open the eyes and look around and see what's happening. And <clears throat> so now we're having these adults that coming from these broken families and they're blaming their past 
they're blaming the parents, the guardians, the life circumstances for what has happened to them. So the blame continues because it's me as the adult and this is my past and this is what society or my parents have done to me. So someone has done me wrong. So that's another scenario. Another scenario is, as you all are very familiar with it, is how much a lot of us are focused on our governments, whether the country or local government, and we're pointing fingers at so many different things that are wrong in where we live, with the environment, with the, the way the mayor runs the city or the way where we live is being handled, uh, the system, and you know, there's a myriad of different things that you can put your fingers finger on and blame other people and blame the system for the way it is. The list goes on and on and on. It depends where your focus goes, you know. Some are very much invested in that this planet is on the verge of destruction or the society is going to be destroyed and it's all screwed up living in a city um, and we need to move to the country and go live somewhere very peaceful away from the city and not be engaged with the city because city people are evil, they're bad, they're unconscious. So now we need to live in the country or do our own farming and be disconnected from them or uh, not being involved with them. So many people on conscious community, they're focused on, okay, we need to be vegan or be vegetarian and not eat the animal products and we need to eat organic and their attention really goes on those things so again, it's me and them, and they get really trapped into that mentality, that way of thinking of things, but they don't realize in this whole crusade of me being eating organic, me being vegetarian, me, I don't want to eat you know, meat, meat or anything like that. I don't want to contribute to that. But then this... We forget that if you're going to be doing anything like that, you have to go all the way. We can't just do it partially. You can't just say like, okay, I'm only going to eat organic or I'm only going to be a vegetarian, but I, I will use all the petroleum products. You know, I'll drive the car, I use the gas, I, you know, buy plastic products for my convenience, but this part of it is cool and is fashionable, so I'm really conscious here, but I use everything else. But this part is trendy, so you, you have to be aware of all of it. You can't just do one part of it and be ignorant to the rest of it. But again, being in this place of blaming everything else blaming others and blaming what has happened to us in the past. But as you are waking up, as you're evolving, which it could be in some ways a fast process for some people, it can develop really quickly, da 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 and it appears to be that way because it appears that with the 21st century, with information revolution, that how information has become available and how much electromagnetic waves are in the air with the cell phones, computers, and different kind of uh, satellites, different kind of ways of sending information and sharing news and information around the world and there is an appearance of things are really exhilarating and there is an appearance that 
on one hand, the planet is on the course of its destruction, and on the other hand, the human consciousness is awakening. And so there is like two separate forces are accelerating into their process simultaneously um, as life goes forward. And in, in this thing, which is happening, and, and it appears to be that a number of people waking up, especially with the younger generation, uh, that they have a very high potential of transformation. Simultaneously, a lot of confusion is going on. So, you're waking up, you're expanding. And this awakening that is happening and your self-awareness is kick kicking in, pay attention to the words, self-awareness. Self-awareness is your awakening. What is self-awareness? You're awakening to what? What are you awakening to? Okay, in the beginning you're learning the lingo. You're learning the language, right? And then your behavior changes, the way you dress changes. You're not driving, you know, you may move in from a gasoline car into an electric car. Uh, a lot of your other, other representation of yourself starts to change to demonstrate your spiritual and your conscious. And again, you're reading the books, you're working on yourself, you're doing a lot of the right stuff, okay? But one thing is missing. And that also requires, because you're not really 100% looking at yourself. You're becoming awake and you're becoming conscious of environment and all the stuff that is going on. But it's very difficult, it's very scary is to look at the shadows within ourselves, to look at the ugliness that we also carry within ourselves. And, you know, this ugliness, once you look at it and you bring light to it, it will transform to beauty. But for majority of spiritual seekers, it's very easy to always put the finger at something outside of themselves and blame someone else or something else or the system and not really look at ourselves not look at our unconscious parts and when i'm referring to that i'm not talking about looking at our unconscious parts in a form of self-blame because we've done that we've done that and that doesn't work and it doesn't serve us but really looking at yourself l literally looking at these parts of yourself to see are you using the spiritual language, the spiritual lingo to pick up, to get momentum for yourself, to get self-pity, so people feel sorry for you, for you to show yourself that you're righteous and everybody else is unconscious? Are you using this to show, to boost up your ego, that how much work you have done on yourself in your life Therefore, I'm very conscious and I'm so, more, so much more advanced in comparison to other people because I've done this, 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 this. You got to be careful because it's very tricky, this part. This requires really attention, paying attention because this is the part that you get, you get very advanced, you're very close and then it takes you in a loop. And it just takes you back into the dungeon and into the gutters. Because 
most people don't want to look at that. Most people don't want to come to this place of expanding to the point of taking blame away. And even in the things that happen to me, you know, let's say how many times I've been cheated, I've been disserviced, I've been lied to, I've been screwed over. I mean, it happens to all of us. We've been on both sides, that we've done both. We lied or we've been lied to. So, there is this part is that we have to systematically, through self-awareness, eliminate and get rid of stuff that is going to hold you down and hold you being a person and hold you wounded and keep you in this state of being a victim, which a lot of us love that. We are fed by it. We're crazy about that. And we don't want to get out of that one. Because that's a good one. You know? We want it badly. And I'm going to tell you what that is. And that is about this victim mentality. Poor me. This has happened to me. I got screwed. My ex, he screwed me over. He took all the money and dumped me with the kids. Um, I was young, I was naive, I married this person and this happened to me. My parents, they did this to me. My dad did that to me. My mom did that to me. There's all kinds of stories. I mean, we can all sit down and come up with so many different variations of different stories that have happened to us. And, and when we tell the story to somebody else, uh, and you know, they nod and they agree and maybe they cry with you and you have some ice cream together and they say, poor you, feel so bad for you for what has happened to you. And it's continuously keeps going and feeding off of itself. But at one point, in your spiritual development, you have you get to this point that you have to pass beyond this. You need to move on. Otherwise, there's no way you can go to a higher level of consciousness. It's impossible. You can say all the right words, do all the right things that you think you're doing, and you got all the good intentions, and carry, carry, you know, wear the dress the way you like to dress and look very spiritual, use the spiritual language, but you haven't evolved and haven't gone beyond the victim mentality because you're still in this place of seeing the world that there is another. Others do exist. There's others. There's you and there's others. Yet you want oneness. Oneness means everything. Oneness means everything is one. The ugly, the beautiful, the mean person and the sweet person, they're all one. They're all one. So, as you start to expand and, you, and you're getting closer in this expansions, expansion of your consciousness and you're coming out of this individual human being which is experiencing life of being separated and being a victim and being helpless into this state of expansion realizing that, wait a minute, 
every sim everything that has happened to me all the experiences that I've gone through in this life everyone who came in my life and did something to me to damage me whether I was five years old or 15 or 50 years old they played a part as if there has been a contract in between us that they would show up in my life in this particular life in this scenario in this movie in this episode you know you know like these movies you're watching on netflix or amazon and there, there's a lot of good stuff that is like series like episode 1 to 15 season 1 season 2 season 3 every season has like 10 or 15 episodes and some of them are really wonderful it just keeps you captivated and you keep watching it so this is one of the episodes or one of the seasons okay so you're in this season of your life and it has got all these different episodes happening and in one of the early episodes of your life you or a few different episodes that you were done someone did something wrong to you you've been cheated you've been screwed over whatever is the story you've trusted this man you fall in love with him you gave him your heart and he cheated you after after a few years he left you for somebody else and and this thing is there in you and you can't get over it and you keep carrying it over and over again constantly you're carrying the story whatever is the story you never met your soulmate you never hooked up with the woman of your dreams with the man of your dreams with the one and now you're carrying this story you're blaming life or blaming something on that what I'm saying is you need to pay attention you need to turn turn your attention inwards rather than worried about constantly putting your attention on the news in the world of what's gonna happen in the future because that's what the news is what's gonna happen to you in the future is bringing your attention inwards and look at what is happening in you right now so not postponing self-realization and and putting it based on somebody else and putting it on yourself and take a look take a look inside what's going on inside what are you occupied with all the time what is your story what's holding you back what are you occupied most of the time with pay attention write it down start writing down every day where is your mind where is your heart what part are you stuck with what's the story that goes on for you what is this tape that broken record that keeps repeating itself pay attention to that you need to look at it and become aware of it and it's scary because there is a deep attachment and investment in a lot of people on the story because I know because I work with a lot of you I work with a lot of people on one-on-one -on -one basis or group basis and they are very attached to their story and when I bring it up the ego comes and gets very angry and really defends the story and that story is what keeps you away from what where you want to get to and that's why you don't get to where you want to get to and you suffer consequently because that's the 
name of the game. If you didn't suffer, you wouldn't even waste your time for two minutes listening to me or listening to any spiritual teacher or reading any spiritual books. If everything was going your way, you would have never come this direction. The only way we come in this direction is because something inside us is nagging. There's this nagging voice that there is something else and there is something more and we're looking for freedom. And that's because things are not going our way, basically. So when you turn your turning inwards and you're looking inside, looking at yourself finally, and in this expansion that's taking place is that if you're lucky, this again comes to our evolution, whether we're ready for it and it's going to click and something's going to kick us in, in, in the butt and wake us up to it is that you start to look at the events happen in your life and take responsibility for it and refusing to be a victim even though if you were beaten up by your dad when you were five six seven years old or whatever is the story is you take responsibility for your karma. You take responsibility for anything that has happened to you. That you start to look at it that this, in some level, in the beginning you may not remember anything, but this is a shift. That you say, okay, in some level, I had an agreement with life, with God, with these other characters that showed up in my life. They beat me, they raped me, they stole from me, they screwed me over. These are the extreme sides. That I had to learn this lesson. Instead of saying that I'm screwed up because these things happened to me and I'm really screwed up, and I'm continue acting based on I'm screwed up because all these things happen and poor me and I'm disadvantaged. That story doesn't take you anywhere, my friend. It doesn't free you. So if you come to me and ask me for my advice or help or the wisdom, then I'm telling you the way out is that you start shifting your consciousness by taking responsibility that I needed to be in that situation and I got sc screwed over, but there was a lesson for me to learn from that. I got, whatever is the story, some of you maybe got pulled into a cult. It's a religious cult. Maybe it's a hardcore um, Christian cult, maybe it's a hardcore Jewish cult or Muslim cult or what, whatever. Or you connected with some guru or whatever and you're in the middle of nowhere and you got a lot of do's or don'ts and then you came out of it and you really messed up in your head because you grew up there from childhood. Some of them you just live life. You you live you live um, life as the what I'm talking about is living life as just being born and being in a family and as being born and growing in a family as a girl or whatever and you're in this really um, um, regimented system that you have to be a good girl and you got to get married and especially if you're older from the older days that your dad was like God and it was a you know dictatorship and that said 
this and shut up and be quiet and be a good girl and follow whatever we tell you. That's like a cult too. It's a regimented system, whatever it is. So it doesn't matter the scenario, the story of what has happened. It, it does not matter, that story. What matters is for you to shift your consciousness, your awareness, shifting it into taking response to to say to yourself to look at it like i entered to this world and i came to this world for and i don't remember before i came what happened i i but i'm here and all of these things that i went through all of this stuff is was a part of my evolution that I had to learn these lessons. And maybe, because you don't remember, maybe I made a deal with every character that showed up in my life. We made a deal to show up in this world for them to be the bad guy, the aggressor, and I'm the victim, and they did this to me, or maybe I did this to someone. Because each and every one of us in this life have done something to somebody else consciously or unconsciously that has hurt them or we've been in a situation that something has happened so this is what came up for me and i can only share with you from my personal experience my direct experience my direct understanding that's all i can say and it's up to you if you want to follow it or not or incorporate this in your own life see if it works for you or or it doesn't obviously the old way is not working because you're not free so you can use that model as measuring whether you're free today or not and if you're not free and happier, then the old model doesn't work for you. So why not give this, the new model, a chance and see what happens? And what is the new model? And I'm going to make it very simple for you so it's not really tied into a lot of esoteric language and it's not a lot of blah, blah, blah. Let's just keep it super simple, okay? Is that for me... Even though that I was in a prison, even though that I was tortured, even though I had near-death experiences, even though that they took me to the point that they wanted to execute me, everything, I am not a victim. No one did the wrongdoing to me. No one. I don't even go there for one second. I had to learn everything. My ego had to be smashed. I had to become humble. I had to come to near death. And through that, so many transformative events came through. So many realizations came through that maybe had I not been in that position, I would have never experienced that and I would have not come to this wisdom to this understanding where I'm at today, that I'll be in a position that I can help thousands of people and I can speak with authority because it comes from direct experience. Is that I signed a contract, I made an agreement for with each and every character that has appeared in my life that they've annoyed me, or they lied to me, or they love me, or they cheated me, or they've broken my heart. Everybody taught me a very valuable lesson. Every single part of it was important equally in my spiritual development. I am where I'm at because of all those things. And I'm grateful 
to every single person, even the one who came to my life and lied to me, looked into my eyes, says, I love you, I'm your brother, I'm your sister, I'm your lover. And they went around me and they stabbed me with a knife. Even that person I'm grateful to. I don't necessarily want to see him again or hang out with him anymore. But there is no resentment. We don't have to see each other. It's over. Some We did what we did. We completed our contract, our teachings, everything. It's over. Thank you. I got it. Now I know if I ever in that situation again, and you can smell it. You can smell the bullshit immediately. Or anything resembling to that. Anyone coming with a story very close to that. You can smell it almost immediately and you walk away. You don't have to repeat it again. Sometimes you're in a situation you have to repeat it over and over again till you get it. But you change your mentality because your awareness is expanding and again, it's difficult to let go. You have to see, you have to look for yourself. See how invested you are in your story called the past. How attached you are in this story. Look at it for yourself. And you will see that a lot of people on this planet are heavily invested in their life story. Poor me, I come from this da 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 da, I come from Mississippi, I'm da da da, I'm a single mom, you know, I'm, I'm black, I'm Muslim, you know, we had to escape from Syria to get here, I can, you know, da 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 da, I'm a mother with eight kids. It's true, it was hard, it was really hard torturous. I'm not saying you didn't go to torture. I'm not saying it was easy. I went to torture. I understand what it means. I mean, I got almost got executed. It's not fun. If you're in a dungeon in the middle of nowhere and they're torturing you and you have no rights, you're completely vulnerable, or maybe you live that life for 30 years, 20 years, as a single mom in the middle of nowhere. It's not fun, of course. Nobody denies that you didn't suffer. If I'm never going to come over and say, hey, get over it. That's very ignorant. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a recognition of understanding how much your mind is attached to this story and wants to hang on to the story and keep repeating it. Keep repeating this story over and over again. And keep you in this place of a victim. And there's no transformation there because you have to evolve from it. Otherwise, you can't go anywhere because you're always going to find, you know, during the election, everyone was like either pro-Trump or against Trump or whatever. And existence was having a joke, was laughing at all of the people who were so involved in it. In a way, God is sitting there and laughing. So, okay, I got him hooked on this one. But the, the thing is, nothing is really going anywhere. Because it's not that this president or that president or this guy is racist, the other one is not. Da, 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 da. It's not those things. It's your internal process. What is going on? What is it doing to you? Because you could be living in the most racist area in the world but internally you're free. 
So nothing is affecting you. And when I talk about racism, it's not like I have not felt it because I migrated to this country and I migrated in the worst time possible. So I know what it's like being under racism. I've experienced it. The first few years I was migrated to the US. So it's not the story. It's con that story continues. It's always here. You're always going to find another. Now it's COVID-19. Now, now they're going to chip you. Now they're going to, you know, there's the virus. And some people worried about that the cure is worse than the virus because that's what's going to kill you. And that's going to control you. And that's going to da 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 da. The story keeps going. You have to evolve beyond the story. It's your responsibility. It's your work. You got to shift your consciousness. And a part of that is stop blaming yourself and stop blaming anything else. And use every single opportunity in this life any disadvantage to turn the poison into the medicine, to simply seeing everything that this is an opportunity that God has provided for you to get over some of your own hangups, to expand yourself, to develop, to develop. Or God has created a situation if, if you have self-worth issues or you have issue to say no, like a lot of people, they have problems with their fifth chakra and we have grown up in society, in a culture that we've been repressed and we're not allowed to say no. We're afraid of speaking our truth. So then we're constantly in a situation that we're facing some kind of bully, whether it's your boss or your husband or wife or someone is bullying you and you have to stand up and say no and speak your truth. I'm not talking about every situation that is happening in your life. That means you have to be submissive because this is God. No, God also appears to you that forces you, pushes you, pushes you, pushes you till you come back and push back and say enough is enough. You know, okay, dad, I'm not going to put up with your bullshit anymore. I'm not going to let you insult me anymore. I'm that, not that little girl who was standing in front of you feels really shaken and her legs are shaking. I'm 35 years old. I'm 40 years old and I'm not putting up with your thing. I don't appreciate it. And it's frightening to speak your truth. So when I say that you need to look at yourself and become aware of, of where you're stuck, is and not blame yourself or blame others and speak and live your truth is a variety of different things it's not just one thing it's not just being submissive it's including if you're very soft and submissive it's not the time to be aggressive maybe or to bring your fire out i don't know what your story is but what i'm saying is shifting your attention from self-blaming or blaming others to taking responsibility of this is your karma, this is your life, and you have to learn things. I'm not saying that you need to put up with shit, but I'm saying that shifting yourself from being a victim. And then you come to your power. You start to see and self-awareness kicks in. Great. Anybody has any questions? Feel free to either ask me verbally or if you want to write it. on the chat box. Is 
Zara Trista. This is Kim Gil. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a dilemma in our household right now. Okay. My step who's living with us recently got tested positive for COVID on Saturday. Who said? Who was that again? Say that again. Ooh. I didn't hear that part. My stepdaughter who's Step living with us. Okay. Okay. Who got COVID? A tested okay. positive side. Okay. Uh, from her boyfriend. Right. Uh, so, and now my uh, husband has been showing symptoms since Sunday night, Monday, and he's going to get tested today. And so I will get tested today at two also. How do you, how do you, I, I don't, I haven't had any symptoms. How do you explain, and, and not trying to not to avoid the blame because, um, they don't take precaution. They're not courteous. They don't sanitize their hands, uh, wipe down their phones. You know what I mean? They just go out, go out and not taking precaution. I'm a, I'm a germ phobic, clean freak type person. Not to, not as bad now as before when COVID started, but I always wash my hands with, um, you know, antibacterial soap. I always cleanse my phone every day, especially if I do go out. Um, you know, how do you explain avoid having to, in terms of blaming them for being irresponsible and not being socially responsible and taking precautions of not passing it to others? Like my husband right now, I'm self quarantining myself. Okay. In my room All right. Well. Hold on. Uh, Kim, so it's, it, so let me just go section by section so it doesn't become a big, huge thing and then I, I forget what, where we're at. Okay, hon? Okay. All right. Okie dokie. So, <clears throat> this is an interesting thing. So, I'm not expecting that people live by this or this is this should be their mentality or not again i can only speak of my own mentality my own understanding okay i've had five near-death experiences in this five near-death experiences i believe three of them i should have died and it was almost an impossible situation that i don't know I mean, I do. It was the grace, Her Majesty, that didn't want me to die. And it just kind of fished me out of it. Obviously, I wasn't supposed to die. When you have these very close events, something snaps inside of you. Okay? Something becomes kind of a joke. It's like... I can do all the right things and do all of these things. Wash my hands, clean my eyes, da, 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 put sanitizer, wear the mask, do all of the stuff and I still can get COVID and I can still die. And I can do, I can just not do any of it and I never get COVID and nothing happens. So, this is what snapped inside of me. And what snapped inside of me that it really doesn't matter what I do or what I don't do, the end results are written. It's written. And this is how I see it. I'm not saying, don't take me wrong, I'm not telling you, you should adopt this mentality. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do with their lives. I'm just here to share with everyone how I perceive things and how things happen for me that it expanded my consciousness and offering ways that I feel it works for other people. I live in trust. I trust that which has brought me on this planet is going to carry me for as long as I'm supposed to be alive. So, 
when this whole thing started to happen, for me it was like, either I can be in extreme fear and panic or worry, okay? Or I can just live my life and trust that whatever wants to happen will happen. And I'm not talking about being reckless because I'm not, I'm not reckless anymore. I have lived my life recklessly and I know what it's like. And I don't feel like doing it anymore. But I realized something much greater than me and my action is actually saving me and carrying me. So I decided that I'm going to trust that force that saved me through five near-death experiences and is going to guide me. So I use my intuition is if my intuition intuitively I feel like some days I have to be extremely careful and sanitize everything I do it and some days if I don't feel it I live my life the way I live it and I move on with my my life but I can't tell you what to do or how you should be my mom, I talk to her every day and it's kind of a routine thing. Every other day she hears a story or she's watching the news and then she goes into the fear and the panic and starts giving me a lecture. Oh, my son, be careful with this disease. Da, 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 da. I mean, it goes into this story. So I have to listen to this whole story. So she tells me her story and then I tell her my story and my story is that mom everything is written and everything is going to be exactly what God wants it to be and if I'm meant to get COVID and die from it since I have no fear of death I'm okay with that because I'm not afraid of death I'm curious to know what it's like to go on the other side I don't know if I was of any help to you or not, but that's how I see it. Everybody's going to operate based on their level of consciousness. Now, if they have to get COVID and go through that experience, who am I to hold it back from them? Because if that's not that experience, it would be another disease. It's not just COVID. You can get in a car accident and break your leg, or you can get something else. There's a myriad of different kind of diseases. So if you have to learn something and go through an experience, that's going to happen to you no matter what. So we have no control over these things, Kim. I see that. I am absolutely not afraid of death, and that is that is completely uh, my view. Because mm -hmm. um, I understand how beautiful it could be. It's just that you know I'm moving. I have to be out of the house at the end of the month, and now he's bedridden. He's aching. He cannot help me. Right. And he will not po postpone the move date and ask the buyer to move maybe in January. So now I'm all alone and I cannot get right. three people that offered to help to come over to right. help me pack. And now we isolate itself quarantine for 10 days is, is putting a lot of burden on me and pressure on me. Right. It, but in the same time, it's your attitude that you can't control what is going on in an external world, right? You can reverse time. Mm -hmm. You can influence maybe his decision or how he views things. So this is a great opportunity for you to let go of what appears to be in control. All right, what's going to happen? What is the worst case scenario? What's going to happen if you can't move? 
we lose the cell uh, that's supposed to be closed at the end of the year. Okay, so that's one one thing, one possibility, correct? So let's say that's the worst case scenario that you move, you lose the cell. How do you know that's not towards your benefit long term? How do you know what is the best thing in your future? It's uh, actually he's the one of the one to sell and move, not me. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So maybe the sell doesn't happen and you end up living here. Yeah. <laughs> So, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, so you have no control on the external affairs of the world. But maybe you can, maybe you can have awareness of your internal affairs of yourself. So, he doesn't want to postpone the date and he can't help moving. And it's like, okay, let's see what happens. I'm just going to let go. I can sit down here and stress all day long and pull my hair out and cry out and blame him or blame others or I can just cruise with it and see what's going to happen. Let me just observe what's going to transpire and in this observation maybe all of a sudden something very valuable appears. Maybe some people show up in your life and help doing all the move maybe maybe all kinds of different things happens you don't know but maybe you use this opportunity and you come to the to the academy you're doing been doing the work well all the work of self-realization you've done this is a time to demonstrate it this is a time to be the Buddha this is the time to be Zen this is the time to keep your mind here rather than letting your mind going crazy because right now your mind's going like what's going to happen how are we going to move how are we going to do that da, 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 da. oh my god i'm going crazy i don't have no help blah, 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 blah. your mind's going crazy so why don't you use this opportunity to be still and surrender to what is surrender to whatever is going to happen welcome what's going to happen and know that the maker, the boss, God, that has brought you all the way to this point in this life, knows what's the best for you and will carry you on. So just trust the process. Trust the process. Trust. I'm totally stressed right now. We yes. have to get rid of all of our furniture and we can even have people come over to look at our furniture. To then, buy. then make an executive decision and, and take, be the boss. Take, put the pants on and be the boss. Call the shots. You decide what to do because everyone else is sick and they can't do anything. Make decisions. Say, this is it. We're not moving. We're postponing. Or whatever whatever it is. What it, whatever that is. What, whatever, I'm not saying what to do. What I'm saying is be still. Someone in the chaos needs to be still, needs to be collected here. Somebody needs not to identify. Otherwise, all these things we're talking about, it's nonsense. Oh, it's really cute. I go to the academy. I listen to Zarathustra. I listen to Muji. I listen to Eckhart Tolle. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard of these things. But if you're not putting them in everyday living life, you're not applying what you're learning, then they're meaningless. Everything I've been teaching is meaningless. This is a time to be very still, to be Zen. Like the same thing happened to my family last week. That two, two of the cousins, they, they were diagnosed with COVID-19. And then there was like a bomb went off. And it was like an explosion. So right as I'm going to the Thanksgiving uh, gathering that all the family everyone had gathered from washington state from northern california it was going to be a this big 
reunion because my mom's 93 my other my other aunt is 89 90 so it was like you know in a way maybe this is the last time so all the kids everyone came together and all of a sudden everything got canceled in a in in the very last moment and became chaotic and a bomb went off and everyone was freaking out and for me it was like I just didn't get involved into the story at all. I just stayed in my center. And everyone's running around washing their hands and putting double mask now and double gloves on and da -da 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 and running, going, getting COVID-19 tests. It was like a bomb went off. And in the midst of everything, I'm just like really still, not reacting to any of it. Somebody here who's working on herself or himself needs to remain the Buddha. And you, that's your opportunity right now. This is a golden opportunity for you, my dear, to be the Buddha. Stay still. Stay in your center. You are not in control of anything in this life anyway. No matter how much it appears that you're in control, that is absolute illusion. None of us have ever been in control of anything. It just appears to be that way. Okay? All right. Thank All right. you. All right. Any other questions? Anybody else? Hi, Catherine. You have to, yeah, good. I think I, did I unmute myself? Yeah, you're doing a good job. Okay. This is just a different perspective, but in the personal history, the personal story, a lot of my personal history is hilarious. It's not sad. A lot of it isn't sad. So my little dilemma is letting go of these stories that would make people laugh it's just a different perspective okay and it's not something i'm crying about but it's just a little different because it seems like a lot of the stories that people have are sad ones and stuff like that and some lines just that i uh a little bit sad about letting go of some of these hilarious stories but i'm doing it just consistent effort I catch myself in so I'm doing it right this minute aren't I <laughs> but that's it okay all right wasn't really a question I'm just sharing really I guess right great thanks thank you for sharing Hi, Candice. How are you? Good, thank you. So you wanted me to talk about blame. So I, we didn't talk about it, so I wasn't exactly sure. Is it self-blame or blaming other people? So maybe you want to uh, um, tell us no. whether we covered and answered your question or not. It was blaming other people blaming other people how you just become aware of how many people talk about who did what to them you know right <laughs> right so i just wanted to know what your you know take on that was and i love how you talked about its responsibility and its evolution you know getting over the blaming so I think you answered it well. Well, thank you. And thanks for bringing it up. I appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> the, um, 
Yeah, it's everything is a change of perspective. So you shift your perspective. So let's say your perspective is that someone is doing you wrong, and now you're shifting that perspective on whatever someone did to you that appears to be wrong. That person was a part of your contract in this life, and they came to play the part to for you to learn what you had to learn from them. I mean, we're here in the dimension, third dimension. Obviously, if the maker existence wanted everything to be peaches and cream, then we would be in this cer celestial state and it's all angels and everything's lovey-dovey and, and there would have never been anything bad happen. Nobody would be tortured, nobody would be beat, nobody would be cheated, none of these things would ever happen. So then everything was good. And obvious, I mean, and that's not the case, obviously. So if it's not the case, then, then what is it that life is trying to show to us? What is it that we need to figure out that things are not that way. That's our, my, our idea of everything to be lovey-dovey and great all the time. But that's not our experience. None of us have experienced that all the time. So then, isn't that time for us to just shift and look at it differently? Look at it like... How about if I look at it from this point of view? That, okay, I'm here, whether I like it or I not, whether I've decided to come to this life or not, for whatever reason, I'm here. I can't be anywhere else, and this is the life I'm living. Maybe I have an opportunity to terminate myself, pick up the gun and shoot myself, or take some pills and die. But other than that, I'm here in this life, whether that's it. Now, how do I want to live it? Where do I want my attention to be? Do I have the tools to shift my attention and look at it differently? Or I don't. A lot of people, maybe they don't have the tools or the know-how or the consciousness. But somehow, us, this community, we have that opportunity and we have come together. So why don't we give it a try? What do I have to lose? What would I lose if I don't try? If I try, what would I lose? What's going to happen to me? I've done this other thing forever. Why don't I try something different and see what happens? Is that going to bring some peace to me? Is that going to shift my view? Is life going to be easier for me if I shift my perspective. This isn't making any sense to you guys? Connie. Okay, um, go ahead. Hi, Connie. When you are in a relationship... Hi. Hi. When you have a, a, a friendship to um, your friend, uh, for example, and you um, find it difficult to stay in it and you want to uh, end it. How can, how can I know that it's not because I want to get rid of the mirror she shows me? So let me see. I, I'm not quite sure if I understand. So you're in a relationship with somebody. And it's not yeah, certain. It's, it's not a relationship. It's a it's a friendship. Yeah, relationship, and friendship, whatever. Yeah. You're you're in uh, a friendship relationship. You're you're friends with someone, and the, then the friendship is not serving you anymore. Correct. Exactly. And so, yeah. what is the question? How do you get out of it? 
No, not how do I get out of it, but how can I know it's time to get out of it? Because it it can be because I'm too. Um, I want to be uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be nice. You want to be the good girl. Well, go back to your conditioning. So you've been conditioned in your childhood that you have to be a Miss Goody Two-Shoe. You have to be nice. You should never do anything to hurt anyone. So as a result, you're putting up with it. And even though the relationship has become toxic, because obviously you don't, you're avoiding to hang out with this person. And then when you're hanging out with them, you have resentments. So obviously it's, it's either you need to sit with them and have a, depending on their level of understanding, because some people don't get it, but if if it's valuable to you maybe you want to sit down you know invite the person over for coffee and cake and be very loving with them hold their hands look into their eyes tell them how much you care for them you love for them and tell them their shortcomings the things they do to that is bugging you and see if they get it and they're willing to make correction or you just let it go yeah you simply don't associate with them anymore you just exactly yeah exactly but, yeah. and but how do i how do i choose to do the one or the the the, the other thing i mean well, i can i can choose to to sit down and look into the her eyes and say this and that or i can just let it go how do I know what's correct? Well, you just have to see what feels right for you. I don't know how, how long you've been friends with this person, if they're relative to you or not, how, what kind of ties you have with them, and how valuable you find this friendship to yourself. I don't know that. You, you're the only one who knows that. So yeah. do you feel like it's worth keeping it or not? yeah that's that's a problem actually a little yeah because it's very long it's 30 years old so you 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 see i feel we have a story together yeah we know each other very well yeah but but for the last one and a half year i feel that we are not matching any longer so yes but yeah yeah so i i ha you know i have a couple of them I have one that we've known each other for years and years and years. And the fellow friend is angry. He attacks me. He takes my energy. Every time we hang out together, I get really exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. And naturally, I don't call him. I don't plan on getting together. I don't invite him to my birthday party. I don't, you know, naturally, I don't <coughs> want to go where it sucks my energy yeah. so yeah it's the same for me actually. yeah and i try to talk to him and he's not getting it when i talk to him he gets very react he shows reaction and he gets aggressive it's painful but you sometimes have to move on that's how it is it doesn't matter I mean, sometimes you got to let your mom go, your dad go, your brother go. And these are the people who are very close to you, but it's become so toxic that you have to walk away. Look at it at this way, that existence, life, God, the spirit is creating an opportunity for you to exercise your power. And your power right now is no. To say no. Enough. No. I'm, I'm not allowing you to put me down. I'm not allowing you to suck my energy. I, but but I, have, I have this feeling that I should be strong enough to, to carry this uh, bad energy or to not get... Well, that's, 
Yeah, if you're enjoying taking shit, then keep taking it. <laughs> you know? And if you feel like you need to suffer and, and uh, that's the path and you should just take it, that's an ego trip too. That's a conditioning yeah. from the past oh. that you should take it, you know? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Now I got the right word. It's right. An yeah. yeah, and yeah. also it's more frightening. A lot of times it's easy to eat shit and not confront the person because it's more... It's like you go back to this little kid who are facing the authority and your dad is there and and is doing like this and you can't confront them because you get stuck and you get frozen. So now in this relationship it seems like he's gone into the bully or whatever somehow unconsciously and you get frozen in front of this person to really tell your truth. So if you want to break through that and give it a try, you can do that. You can sit with a person and tell your truth to them. Yeah. And when you do that with someone, you tell the truth, two things happen. Normally there is an initial reaction that they either they may hear you and they get upset or they get sad and then you don't hear from them for a week or two or a month and then when they come back your relationship bonds and gets even stronger and it really goes into another level. Or they just completely react to you and they say, you know, screw you and they just disappear. Yeah. In either way you're going to get what you want. So you're either going to free yourself from this person by them leaving or you free yourself by them helping them to come to a higher level of understanding by adjusting yeah. to that. So you're going to be the winner in either case. Yeah, you don't need to stay in this victim position. Cool. So we're coming to the end of the academy. I'd like to thank you all for uh, being here, whether uh, through our system Zoom or Facebook or Instagram. Um, feel free. If you have any comments, you can always write to me. My email is info at zaratustra.tv. And my website is zaratustra.tv. Uh, we also uh, simultaneously this broadcast is being recorded on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, we're going to clean this up um, and email it to you, and also put it on on my YouTube channel. Uh, also, uh, the audio part of it minus meditation is going to go on my podcast. Uh, all my channels are Zaratustra 5D. So if you want to visit my podcast or my uh, YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're constantly uploading um, new stuff on it. Uh, also, if you have any comments, questions, feel free to email me. Um, our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. Uh, the schedule of upcoming um, academy, they're all on my website. You can go to the website, to the calendar part of it and see what's coming up. I don't have any other events except the academy for now. I may come up with some events in January. Um, definitely things will be coming, but at this moment it's only the academy. Uh, the only other... Uh, service that I provide is my life training program which is an exclusive VIP tailor-made one-on-one -on -one program. Uh, it's designed uh, tailor-made to your needs. For that, if you're interested, you're welcome to send me an email and we set up a consultation appointment with you. You and I will sit down and talk over Zoom and we'll find out whether you qualify for it and if I can help you or not. 
I can't take any students now. The earliest it would be uh, in three weeks or after the first of the year. So um, feel free and reach out and we'll be happy to hear from you. Sending you lots of love and light and I look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste.